Hi everybody, it's me Kara and instead of doing a makeup tutorial, we are actually going to do a step by a step by step a step by step instructional painting of a wine bottle. Um it's funny because this is what I normally do. I am the proud owner of Carazy Paint and uh we are a now we're a travel based company where we come to you and we teach you how to paint anything you want. So um, I kept my pink wig on from this morning's makeup tutorial, but I thought it just added to our fun and funky paint vibe. So here we go. It's going to be weird because um, I'm going to try to keep it simple for everybody to follow along and not being able to hear your feedback is going to be a little difficult but if you have any questions you can always comment below and I will answer you um, as, as soon as I can so I'm starting with a lot of people think that you can use the standard acrylic acrylic paints I can't talk you'll learn that I'm going to tell you um, standard acrylic paints but you cannot use a regular acrylic painting uh, paints for glass it just doesn't adhere to the glass well and even if it does dry you're like yeah it looks great as soon as a drop of water touches that shit it's gonna go pfft, done so um i'm using a frosted wine bottle that i get from my art supplier uh so you can order them like this or you can buy a spray that they sell at like michael's or um they sell they at Home Depot, any place like that, you can get like a frost spray. Um, it works the same. It depends on, you know, how, how crazy you want to get. So, um, what I do is I mix my own paints. I use a paper plate for a palette. I think that it works just fine. And I have three brushes. I use, I, um, use long handle brushes. You can use whatever you have, but normally it's about a one inch thick a brush that I use for like my backgrounds and and large spaces and then I have a pointed round brush I believe this is a four or two or six I don't know but just as long as you have like a smaller pointed brush and I have a smaller flat brush there with the square tip so my paints I use I have a plaster infused enamel paints that I so I mix a little bit of plaster into my enamel paint and I also use some acrylic paint. Again, you can use straight enamel paint that you buy at Michael's um, or any other craft store. They usually look like this. They're sufficient. Um, this is a multi-use enamel paint. Uh, they work great. I just, I do what I do because I'm a pain in the ass. So we're going to start with um, our bottle. I also have uh, some quality paper uh, towels. I say quality not because I'm being an ass, but I'm saying quality because if you use the, the real thin ones, it just doesn't absorb the water and you end up using a ton of them. So I have, I think these are bounty, like two of these little things. And you don't want to enamel paint stains you can't wash that out so wear something that either an apron or a clothing that you don't mind getting painty i have this nifty little thing it's a cork that you pull this little tab in the back and it has you can't really see them light up unless this isn't working I've never had one not work. It figures. I'd be making a video. I'd be making a video. What? I'm making a video and it's not working. So this is a string of lights that is attached to the cork and you put that in your bottle and it lights everything up. So unfortunately, I guess this one isn't working or maybe it's too bright. Oh no, it's working. You just can't see. So this is my string of lights that of finishes off the bottle nicely so let's let's get crazy and paint so I'm gonna start with my large brush and we are going to start with making your sand line on the bottom so I'm gonna say we're gonna go up I have a rough sketch here 
on my <laughs> on my son's Minecraft um, paper towels of what I'm gonna paint. But you can't even tell what that is. But so I'm gonna go up. Probably my high point of the sand is gonna be about three inches high. I'm going to use a little bit of my uh, golden brown here. Anytime that you pull off of your palette, you always want to pull off. There's a little cat hair in there. You always want to pull off from the side so you don't muddy up your entire uh, color there. So I'm just going to pull off a little bit here. I'm going to pull off a little bit of that white. Actually, a lot of that white. See that? And I'm going to make like a real light beige. Now you can do. You can add yellow if you want more of a yellow sand. I want more of a, I guess a Caribbean, no, Caribbean's white, right? Maybe Jersey Shore kind of has that tanny. So again, my high point is going to be about three inches. If your bottle has a seam, you might want to start at the seam. Mine does not. So I'm going to start here about my three inch point. And I'm going to pull it diagonally down like that. Now remember, you have to, don't worry about it being a real complete straight line. And you're going to come around your entire bottle. That's going to be your sand line. And we're going to put some things in our sand. We're going to put... Um, that beach fence, you know, that, that those little fences. We're going to have a palm tree that comes out. Maybe a pair of flip-flops. You can even write a little heart, love letter in the sand. So you want to make sure that you leave a significant amount or an ample amount to what you want to put in your sand. So I'm going to fill that in. I guess it's about two inches. And I fill that bottom in. And if you run out of paint, don't worry about it. Just pull some more off your palette. Make sure that you go around your bottle. So there's my high point. So I'm going to come off over here. And it's just going to... I don't want a real hard ledge, so I'm just going to blend that back down into my sand line back here. And you can fill that all in. Now when you're painting on glass you want to move quickly. And if you're using a clear glass, like a clear glass bottle, then you want to prep that glass with an alcohol swab. You want to, um, an alcohol pad. You just want to wipe that whole thing down um, it takes any oils uh, from your fingers off the glass, but you don't really have to do that with a frosted glass. So you want to move quickly because if you paint over the same spot too many times when you're painting on glass, it'll actually remove the paint. It's a real pain in the butt. You can't, um, you can't fill that in. You'll just have to kind of wipe it all clean and go at it again. So here's my beach line. There was my high point there, and then I just gradually had it come down. Don't worry about seeing the um, the brush strokes there. It actually adds kind of depth and definition to your sand. So we have that. You don't want to blend it too much either. I don't know if you can see in there. There's some darker spots in my sand. So I'm going to rinse my brush, and anytime you rinse your brush, <laughs> I always tell people don't stab it, even though sometimes we're feeling a little stabby. You just want to press it to the bottom of your water well, which I have. You don't need a lot of water in there. I usually fill it like halfway. So you just want to press it to the bottom and vigorously swish it. You don't want to stab it, because when you stab it, it pushes the paint up the bristles, and that paint gets kind of trapped in here and usually will come back down when you are painting with white and it's usually black or blue. You don't want that. So just swish it around. 
take your napkins and just dab it. Now, if your paper comes out like that, great. If it's like tinted, it's fine. But if you see any solid color on your napkin, it's not rinsed properly. So it looks fine. And now we're going to do the water line. So I'm gonna bring my water line to about here. This is gonna be my horizon line. So it's probably one, two, another three inches up. You can see I have a dark blue and a little bit of a lighter blue up there. So I'm gonna take my dark blue first. I'm gonna fill the front and back of my brush. And again, don't, don't worry about it being uh, completely straight, but just try to get it as straight as you can. It's not really a big deal. So again, I'm bringing it up, one, two, three. You wanna make sure your highest point here, it's about two inches above your high point. So I'm taking that as my guide. And you can even place this on the table if you'd like. This oh, my big booty just hit my chair behind me. Scared the shit out of my cat. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So I'm gonna take it and you can like just spin your bottle like that. Can you see me? Yeah. You spin your bottle. You'll get a straight line. So I'm gonna go all the way around. Again, you wanna move quickly. As long as your two ends meet don't worry about it so I have that dark blue line right there that's going to be my horizon line I'm gonna leave that a little bit darker I'm gonna go for just my light blue now and I'm gonna go just beneath that if it's not light enough you can always pick up some of your white You could just pick up some of your white anyway because I think it adds to the movement of your water. But just don't go all the way to the top. You want to leave that top here a little bit darker. And you're going to fill that in. Be real careful not to hit your sand line. Just be carefully. Go to your... Each line there, fill that in. I'm using the front and back of my brush. And by not blending the blues or the white together, you, um, you get different shades that kind of deposit on your bottle and it looks you know it gives the illusion of waves and that's by just putting a little bit of white on the top of your brush and very gently pulling it through your bottle but turn your bottle upside down if that gives you a little bit more control when you get down by the shoreline here. Now, if you are in Atlanta County, Ocean County, or Salem County, or anywhere near there, even Cumberland County, um, that is where Crazy Paint travels and does these paint parties and we come to you we bring everything you need even our mask real gently just pulling some of that white through you can comment below if you'd like to schedule an event 
for some details or you can go to carazypaint.com which is c-a-r-a-z-y paint.com that's our website so this is your base I'm going to give everyone a little time to catch up. Cleaning out my brush. Now, ideally, um, I'd like to put a little bit of drying time between our layers. But since this is a video and I can't stop it, because <laughs> I don't know how, um, we're just going to move forward. So you can hit pause. Or you can tough it out like I am. So here is, I always make sure that my brush is clean before I move on to the next step. So I'm just going to place that aside. And tip over. Do you see that? I was like, Burr. So I'm going to put some clouds up here, up in our sky, and I'm using, let's see, where is it? I'm using my small square brush, and I'm getting some white, tap, 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 on the palette. And the reason why I'm doing my clouds first is because if I bring my um, if I bring my palm tree over and the the palms go over the clouds, it gives a little bit of depth too. So here I go. I'm holding my brush vertically. No, I'm not. I'm holding it horizontally, so it's side to side. And I'm dabbing. Now you don't want to do, you don't want to make these three little circles like we did in school because it makes it look very elementary. But you do want to kind of stick to that elongated um, shape. You don't want to go big round cloud. So I'm starting in, this is going to be my center spot. Just making it nice and fluffy. Kind of pulling it out. I'm going right at it. So my brush is straight. There's a little camera. It's like straight at it like that. And I'm pulling it out, tapping lightly there at the edges just to pull it out. Now you can change the shape of your cloud if you don't like it, but I just, my best part of it, um, can't talk. Um, my best advice is to not judge your painting until you're all done because we're layering. So things are going to look a little crazy right now and that's what it's supposed to be. So there's my one. You can bring some a little lower, make them a little smaller. I'm just kind of turning my bottle. I'm not refilling the white. I have two. Maybe put another one, a little tiny one over here. Turning my bottle upside down. Just you can add a little bit down by the borderline there. Just kind of looks like the leaves are crashing in. Go bring it through your water. I 
because it had a little bit more weight and I dabbed it on my hand just because that's what I'll do. And I'm just bringing a little bit and just kind of, kind of straight lines there. And that's just to make it look like, give your water a little bit of movement. Now, I do have some regular acrylic paint pulled in through my um, enamel paint, and that helps it to dry a little bit faster, too. My face is all up in here. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm just bringing my waterline down here. So you don't want to bring too much movement up towards the top of your of your water because even if you think about you know looking out into the ocean unless there's something going on out there it's usually pretty calm so your craziness is really you know your waves and everything are really towards the closer to the shoreline there Don't worry about the perfection. So we do have movement in our water. Clean that out by stirring, not stabbing. I can't even believe that I have I'm like wearing um, a little dress right now because my legs are disgusting. I fell when we were walking, so I have this like big scrape, and I'm white as a ghost, and my legs are so dry and gross. And I'm sorry. Like I said, I was doing a makeup tutorial earlier earlier so you just saw my face didn't really matter what I was wearing but then I just rolled into it because my son's in school I was like ah, I got some time let me do this so yeah I'm sorry okay so I'm gonna clean my brush and another thing um people always ask me when they should change their water and I tell them that they're even though it may look gross there's no need to change your water while you're painting. Your paint will always be thicker and heavier than your water. So no matter what color your water is, you don't need to change it. As long as you swish your brush properly and get all the solid paint, uh, colored paint out, you don't need to. I actually have something on my, um, one of the videos on my Facebook page, the Crazy Paint Facebook page, is, um, I painted something black. It was actually um, a Led Zeppelin painting. So the background is black and then I painted white on top of it and I never changed my water. So I just, you don't have to. That's it. All right. So I'm still using my little square brush and I'm going to go for my dark brown here. So I have the dark brown. And then I'm picking up a tiny bit of that, just like a real small, see I have dark brown and I'm going off the side here, picking up my golden brown. I'm holding, now I'm holding the brush vertically and you can decide where you wanna put your, um, your palm tree. So, I'm going kind of like here's my high point so I'm gonna bring it around my high point and right I'm gonna start here so I guess maybe a two inches up from the bottom of my um, foot of the bottle 
So I'm gonna hold my brush vertically and somewhat on an angle. And I'm gonna pull and give it a little bit of curve in your your tree there because you don't want to um, you don't want to have this like big stick. Okay, so here I'm gonna pull from here. And you want it to come. And palm trees aren't straight; their trunks are kind of lumpy. So I'm pulling it straight up. Giving it a little curve. I'm making sure that I go over my water line there. You don't want to go too high because we're going to put the palms on there. So that was my, my guideline. And then I'm going back here. It's going to be thicker by the base. And I'm going to bring it in. So it's thicker by the base and see how it kind of tapers as it goes up. And I don't want to square off my tree there. So I'm holding my brush, still holding it vertical and just kind of pushing that paint through. Be careful there because you don't want to pull off your blue. So I'm just pushing gently, kind of layering that paint there. Again, I just, I didn't want my palm tree to look like a perfect line, so I did give it some lumps there. And I'm gonna pick up maybe a little bit of white paint, just a tiny bit on my brush there. And I'm just gonna push through that. And I did the same thing with, I didn't clean my brush and I just did the same thing with some black. It just makes it kind of like a dark brown. And we can add more shading to that a bit later. I used to have pink hair too, so I miss it. But so I like my little wig. <laughs> so now I'm going to our pointed brush. And you could just dip that in the water and roll it between your fingertips to get that point back. I don't have green paint on my palette but I have blue and I have yellow, so I'm going to take some blue. And the blue, my paint has a very, very strong pigment, so I'm just kind of keeping that blue that's on my brush right here. I'm gonna scoop off from the side some yellow. I'm gonna mix and I come up with a real light green, which is pretty. Now, if I want that darker, we're gonna use different, different, um, shades there we go different shades of green so I'll start with the light eh, I'll add a little bit more blue to make it darker green and I'm rolling my brush here on the side just to give it the point now be careful with your fingers um, you want to keep you know keep your free hand up by the top here and control it because you don't want to get uh, any stray paint on your on your glass. So here is my my green, and I'm just making um, just kind of like guidelines, like the stem, I guess. I'm gonna pull off there. Okay. 
Do you hear that? It sounds like children screaming. I think it's seagulls. <laughs> So I'm gonna pull that down. And I'm just pulling down. Real soft. You don't wanna make it look sticky. Like you don't want there to be any space between. See how I'm just pulling down it can be different lengths. Tapers, I wouldn't get to the end there. Base oh crap, see what I did? You can fix that. I just blended that right in, it looks fine. See how it's wispy? Just very gently dragging your brush. I'm gonna pick up some yellow and do another layer in there. And I'm gonna go back to my green. And it's basically what you're gonna be doing. It's just adding a little bit more blue to your, your mixture to make it more green, some yellow. You want there to be a ton of different shades. So now I'm gonna do the other side. Same thing, but now I'm just going upward, bringing that down. See how it's just very wispy. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add another one over here. I'm gonna bring it above my cloud. And I'm overlapping. You could see that I'm going just right over that first one there. Real wispy. Same thing over here, real wispy, just bringing them upward, soft to touch. Now pay attention to your shape. Look at your tree, okay? Say, so, hmm, I don't know if I like that. I think it needs to be, you know, thicker. So you can make it thicker. If you think it's too thick, you can always add a little tiny bit of white to your brush Add some white highlights to where you think it's thick, like this, and, and it'll give the illusion that it's thinner, or it's, you know, the back of it. So I'm going to continue. I usually put about five. So I'm going to continue with that same technique. I'm going to bring another one over here. And you can do that now. Same technique, bringing it down nice and wispy, and then bringing it up. Make sure you have some above the waterline and some below it. Adding white or yellow gives you some different shades. Some blue. Add a little one up on top just to throw off that symmetry. I'm 
I'm also I'm rinsing my brush, but I'm also going to put a little bit of that dark brown on my brush. You don't have to do this, but I'm just bringing a little bit of darkness underneath here. If you, you think back to palm trees, some of them have the old growth underneath there. That also adds a little bit of shading. Now I'm gonna put that little beach fence over here. I'm using my white and my little square brush. There it's gonna be. So here's my white and just the tiny, tiny, tiniest bit of that dark brown, which is the burnt umber. So you can see, I just put a tiny, tiny bit I'm going to blot it on my palette there to take it off. So just the top of my brush is tinted with that for umber. I'm going to hold my brush on its side because you don't want the fence to be too big. So I'm holding it on its side. So I'm going right on its side. And I'm going to make my first um, fence is going to be post. Hold it on its side. I'm bringing it down. It's going right past the water line. So right above it. And if you think of those fences, they are pretty flimsy and fragile. So I'm going to make them a little wonky. So the different sides. Sizes, not size, sorry. They kind of land at the same place here. I'm putting five you can I'm not a fan of symmetry so I'm adding a little bit of that dark brown to the top of my brush again and I'm just kind of pulling up just a little bit now if you think they came out too dark Kind of dabbing down here, just kind of adding a little bit of shadow, real soft to touch, real light. Never cleaned my brush, I didn't add any more paint, still from that brown that I added to the fence. I'm just adding a little bit of shade or shadowing there. The base of my tree, just kind of muddying it up there. Now, if you think, if you don't like the way your, your fence looks, you just rinse out your brush, dry it off on your napkin, put a little bit more white, and just go over a few of them. That just blends it in a little bit. Your fence. Make sure you can't see through the fence. I'm just adding a little bit more here because I don't want to see the blue. Because my fence isn't see through. can't weave well enough alone, right? Now 
Now this is where you can get creative. You can do a heart in your sand. You can do flip flops. I'm going to, you can write your name. That's how you can like do your signature. You can write your, you know, your pet's names, do little paw prints, um, whatever you want. You could do little footprints. I'm going to make little flip flops. So I'm going to add, so the red has a very strong pigment as well. So you want to just take a tiny bit of that red, put it to the side, grab some of your white, mix it, and you'll get this nice pale pink. Actually, you can do any color that you you would like for your, your flip-flops. And I'm just doing two little over here. Make sure your hands are clean, which mine never are. It's shocking. I'm going to put two. This is my round brush I'm using for my. I'm just doing two little marks here. I'm not really worried about them looking like perfect little flip flops, but that's just two little pale marks there. I didn't clean my brush. I just dipped it in the straight red that I had. And I'm just going to do the little real soft to touch so your lines stay nice and thin. There's my little flip flops. So I tell most of my classes that I instruct, I'm a lot more crazy too in person. I think I'm being like grown up right now but um I tell most of my classes that when you go to a museum they tell you to step away from the art it's not just because they want you to not touch the art it's because they want you to see it in its entirety because when you're looking at something in its entirety you can see everything you can see all the detail you can see all the beauty and when you're looking at something straight up in your face, <laughs> when you're painting something for like an hour, you're only focusing on small bits and pieces of the art. And some um, some of it is dry, some of it's wet, so the light's hitting it differently, and you really aren't seeing it in its entirety. You're just kind of focusing on little spots, and um, you, it, to you, it may not look perfect, but when it's up on your wall, or on your shelf, or things, or, or just not two inches from your face, you'll appreciate it more and just wow I, I did that I created that and that's like my favorite part and um, even if you take a picture not so much of the glass the glassware because you do need to like kind of twist it around to see it, it in its entirety but when you're painting on canvas I tell people to take a picture of it with their cell phone because um, that's when you can see the whole thing so when they like 90% of the people will look at it with their cell phone and say <gasps> It looks so much better in picture. It's not a camera trick. It's just because you can see everything. So that's my rant. Okay, so I'm going to add, um, I think, actually, I'm not, I don't know. You can add a little sailboat in your water. You can even put starfish on here. But I feel like it needs... It needs a little something. You can even do a little sand castle, which I really want to do. But um, here's the. You want to make sure that you keep your sand your sand castle, your sailboat small because it's back here. So I'm going to. I cleaned out my little white brush, and I'm gonna bring it. Can you see me? I'm bringing the sail here. This is kind of like rounded, that one sail. And my other sail, I'm making more triangular. I'm gonna fill that in. Okay. 
You want to be real careful when you're using the um, the black. But I'm going to go real soft to touch and bring that down so my line doesn't get too thick. I'm just going to make a little line under here. Just kind of shimmying it. I'm not really making it too solid. And I'm going to give it a little red flag. So this is my little ground brush. I'm just going to make Now it's simple, you know, there's not like crazy amount of detail in there, but there is. It'll look beautiful on, you know, you can even put it as a nice, like on your night table, uh, uh, nightstand, <laughs> um, part of your centerpiece on your, on your dining table, outside of your patio table. Um, and with the lights, it's real nice because it does add a nice warmth to it. Here we go with that. If you want to do birds, um, you can, like the seagulls. Um, sometimes, you know, it's real easy to get carried away when you're when you're painting birds. So I'm gonna, I'm pretty happy with what mine looks like. I'm gonna add a little bit of the wire on the fence with my round brush I just cleaned out with some black paint and just very gently. I'm just going to drag that little squiggly line there. So, here. If you want to add some seagrass, you can. I'm putting a little bit. I didn't wash my brush. I just kind of mixed my yellow and blue together. Down by the bottom of the palm tree. Kind of flicking it up there by the fence. I mean, if you even want to get real crazy, not, I guess it doesn't really make you crazy, <laughs> but I'm just mixing a little bit of the yellow and the red together to make like an orange. Orange kind of gives it the tropical feel. You could even add a little bit of orange, not too much, but a little bit to your palm tree there. Just not through, you know, just a little accent. You could add a flamingo to your beach. You could do anything. It doesn't, it could be your beach. It doesn't even have to be like, you know, if you want to put like a tiki bar or an umbrella, you really can add anything. You have the whole beach on the whole other side. To really add anything you'd like over there. This is such. I just looked up and like made that that face like that awful you catch your reflection in your phone face. <laughs> so here is the painting. I'm satisfied with it. I think I'm I'm done. Now there is a trick. No, I really don't think my, so sad, my string of lights is working. There's a trick with this, and it's a real pain in the butt if you don't find that little part. There's a little seam part here, a little right here. You have to find that part where it wraps around your string of lights. So here it is. And I want to unravel that part first, okay? So here's my end. You unraveled it from here. And then it comes off nice and easy. So I'm going to stick... I'm going to stick that part into the bottle.
maybe today. Maybe I'll get done today. I'm shoving it in the in here. Maybe I'll put it here. You can even use the end of your paintbrush if it's giving you a hard time like it's giving me. Just drop it. So you just feed that through the neck of your bottle. Don't get your fingers stuck. So here you go. And then you can turn it on with the lights and it would work beautifully. But mine isn't. And I'm so sad. <laughs> I wonder why. Oh, I see why. I think. Nope. They have three watch batteries in here, so you can replace the batteries. I have another string of lights inside, so that's probably what I'll do. I'll just get another string of lights. But if you have them, they look so beautiful all lit up. Um, but here's your bottle and here's your cork. Even though my lights, my lights suck. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed today's class. And I'm going to replace my string of lights. And if you have any ideas or anything that you would like to paint, just let me know. Have a great night. Thanks for sticking around with my me. <laughs>